Everybody and welcome to today's episode of the Kuinoa podcast. I'm Maria Oldfield, your host, and we've got Annie with us today. Annie, how are you doing? I am so delighted to be here with you, Marie. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. Do you want to start off by telling the, the listeners and viewers a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, so I was the single most sales avoidant human on the planet Earth. And what I mean by that is I had a small business for many, many years in different forms of what we now call coaching, uh, although that term wasn't necessarily around when I got started. And I loved helping people. I just wanted to help people all day long. I just wanted to talk to people and solve problems all day long. And that was beautiful in theory, except I never included myself in that equation. I never included myself in my own success. And so I almost drove myself out of business multiple, multiple, multiple times until I realized finally and quite desperately that I needed to fix my relationship with sales. Fast forward a few years later, I have fallen so deeply in love with sales that I now have exclusively focused on my company, the non sleazy sales Academy, where I help wonderful people sell beautifully with every ounce of their integrity intact. I'm so interested in this topic because there's so many discussions that happen about how do I cold call? How do I make cold sales? How do I start selling for my company? How do I get business? Mm -hmm. And we've all had those emails and um, messages on social media that say, oh, I'm approaching you for this. I'd like you to get involved in this. And then it just becomes like message after message after message. And it's all automated and it's not coming across authentically uh, or the cold call out of the middle of nowhere. And a lot of people are scared by sales because, you know, Mm -hmm. there's rejection involved. There's a lot of prep involved. How do you start on this journey of if you've got a small company or you want to be a coach and you want to start selling, how do you start? So there's a mindset piece and a strategic piece. And luckily, the mindset piece really is like flipping a switch. Like once it's up, it stays up. Not that you're not going to have some challenging moments. Of course you are, because putting yourself out there is uncomfortable. And I wish I could take that away from you, but I can't. What I can do, though, is I can help you not make costly mistakes in the form of the strategy component of selling, right? The mindset piece is realizing that the way that you have defined selling in the past is incomplete. What I mean by that is most of us have what I call sales baggage right? Sales baggage is the stuff that makes us go, I'm an amazing marketer. I'm an amazing provider. Time to ask for money. Right? That is that feeling of baggage. Where does that come from? Part of that comes from every single time we have ever been sold to terribly. We all have a tendency and especially women Um, And especially among non-women, especially people that identify as sensitive or highly empathic, right? We keep this running log of every time we've been swindled, lied to, over-promised, under-delivered, bad customer service. We keep this running log. But the problem with that running log is at the very top of the page, we have written sales. And then we treat those things as a definition. What we don't have a tendency to do is every time we've been sold to beautifully, we don't go back and update that definition. So it becomes the running list of all the horrors, none of the goods. So of course, if you are a heart-centered person looking at that sheet of nasty, you're gonna go, I never wanna do that to my clients and prospects, ew. What I'll do is I'll just market myself until I'm dead and then eventually maybe they'll self-select to hire me right? That's one form of sales baggage. The other main form of sales baggage is times when we were forced to sell by someone else's standards or especially someone else's stuff. And in the States, a lot of this happens as children because we're going door to door to fundraise for our school or for our church. They give you no training on that. They give you a great big box of stuff and they're like, go harass your neighbors. (laughs) We see that still today in people's DMs. Hey, 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 how are you? Thanks for accepting my friend request. Let me tell you something. That's that exact same mentality of being a little kid and being like, hey, I live across the street. Will you please buy this wrapping paper from me? It's weird and awkward, but that too goes on our list. People in corporate, what do you do? You pick up the phone, you say the spiel, you get the no, you hang up, you pick up the phone again. All of these things we've cobbled together to define selling. That is not selling. That is sleazy. 
selling. The art of selling for a heart-centered person is solving a problem for money and creating a win-win for both of you. You're working with them to solve a problem in their life and in exchange, you are receiving the ability to continue in that vein. If you look at selling as that way, if you look at selling as the gateway to serving, people say selling is serving all the time. It's kind of hard for them to get to. I say sales is the gateway to serving. It opens that door. Once that switch is flipped, we go, okay, I don't have to do any of the lying, the manipulation, the begging, the, I don't have to do any of the, Hey girl, I know we haven't talked since high school. I don't have to cold message 19 people on LinkedIn every day. All of that is optional asking isn't so then the strategic part kicks in of teaching you how to enjoy the art of the ask and how to deliver what you ask for um and that's it right it, it sounds really simplistic but really it all begins with understanding that we take meticulous notes of all the things we hate about sales but very rarely do we go wow my kid's daycare is amazing. They take such incredible care of my kid. I'm so glad to re-enroll with them. They raised their rates, but they handled that really beautifully. And they take such good care of my kids. I can't imagine going somewhere else. Put that on your sales list. We don't. There's there's also a huge amount of issue around money, isn't there? I mean, there's a mm -hmm. big um, virtual assistant group on Facebook and, and a few conversations in there are all about how much do I charge? Yeah, And that's really difficult to mm -hmm. kind of benchmark against not not only other companies but what it is that you need to deliver and i find that writing a proposal helps you kind of look at what it is you need to deliver and, and how much you're going to price it but if you're a coach you might not be writing a proposal or there might be an industry in which you're not doing that mm -hmm. so how can you kind of um price yourself up and get over that kind of because at some point you've got to have a discussion about, well, if if you're going to come to me for this, then I'm going to mm -hmm. charge you this. And actually, if we were purchasing something the other way around, that, that wouldn't be an issue. But it seems to become a huge issue when somebody then wants a service, but then we need to get some money for that. So avoid gimmick pricing. Part of the reason why people feel so weird about their price point is that when they go to set it down, they're like, okay. What are the trends of pricing I can see? Okay, it's a dollar for three days. And then after that day, it's $39.99 for six months. And then, okay, but wait, hold on. It's gotta be 39. It can't be 37. It's gotta be 39. Wait, no, it should be 37. No, da, 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 da. okay. All of that is gimmick pricing. And all of that makes sense for some reason. There is psychology behind it. There is buyer science behind it. Sure, all of that is well and good. But you also have to remember, we are all selling to an international audience. If I painstakingly choose a bunch of sevens in my business here in the States, my Canadians aren't getting sevens, my Australians aren't getting sevens, you're certainly not getting a seven. So what does it freaking matter? Instead of looking at the urgency or scarcity gimmick, which has good value, or any of the kind of pricing hacks that you see, what I want you to do is instead Put your comparative hat on and go and look at your competitors. Number one, ideally, everybody's putting their prices on their website. Please put your prices on your website. Please put your prices on your website. <laughs> it's right? so annoying when people don't do oh, that. How do you purchase anything? How do you purchase anything? You just, it, what happens is we just assume that it's too expensive and we move on, right? Yeah. But ideally, if you can go in a totally ethical not shady way don't go sign up for their mailing list under a pseudonym or anything like that like if you want to be on their mailing list use your freaking name or just email them and be like hey i'm in your lane right whatever but do your research on your competitors and then ask what are they delivering and do i deliver something comparable a lot of the time when we look at our competitors, if we don't allow our silly mental chatter that slows us down to go, well, their stuff is more expensive than mine because it's not mine, which is one of the other things we do. Well, they can charge that. Well, that, 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 that. Be, be mindful of that. I want you to qualitatively look at what they're offering. They're offering six one-hour sessions. I'm also offering six one hour sessions, right? They are offering Voxer and email support. I'm not, okay, cool, right? Whatever it is, then you can go, because of that, I can see the logic in their pricing. Then you pick up their logic and you put it on your business and you go, does that make sense? Because we're competing person to person. 
What we're saying is, is this industry standard correct for me? Now, sometimes it's not. Sometimes I look at my competitors and I'm like, all of them are crazy. <laughs> I don't want to charge $20,000 to have vague uh, proximity to me. Sometimes in my ethics and integrity, I'm going to look at that and I'm going to go, heck no, that is not for me. But that is my ethics, integrity, and style making that decision, not my mindset baggage. Similarly, there are people out there charging less than me that I can look at that and be like, how do they eat? Are they independently yeah. wealthy? Are they trust fund babies? How does this work? <laughs> are they going out of business? Are they me 10 years ago where I'm destitute and constantly serving? Like what's going on here? I can look at that number two and go, eh, that's not for me. But in both instances, I'm basing it on what I'm putting out and what I'm asking to receive. If I can focus on that and make sure that that's in balance, then all the sevens and the nines and the blah, 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 blah will come, right? But the main thing about pricing that I need everyone to understand is that what you would pay to solve your own problem is not relevant math. It is not relevant math okay no no okay i gotta ask you marie what is something that you love to pay for it could be food it could be a service provider it could be somebody who does your hair but what is somebody somebody you love to pay or something you love to pay for cleaning someone to oh. do the cleaning i hate cleaning <laughs> okay perfect 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 scenario would whoever comes to clean your space that you so gratefully pay, do you think that person would turn around and pay the same amount for someone to come clean their house? Not at all. So if the person cleaning your house chose to only charge you what they would pay to have their house cleaned, you would expect them to charge you what, like a dollar? Yeah, and, and I'd that's expect to really- a viable business. No. That because I think that's going to be a really bad product because it's a dollar, right? Right. I want it's you to not, charge me something. Service, right? You want to charge you something, mm. but I think about this a lot in terms of people that like uh, service providers that work in a pit of other service providers. So, uh, hairstylists, for example, if I work in a salon with five other stylists and we're all independent, but we buy these chairs, I'm probably going to strike up a barter where I'm going to dye the girl next to me's hair and she's going to dye my hair and we're both going to go on and we're going to honor each other's time and the exchange of that time, but we're going to exchange time instead of money. So I don't have to pay her to get my hair done because she's sitting next to me and neither of us have a client right now. By the same point i wouldn't say oh don't pay her she'll do it for free to random people off the street she's doing it for free for me for energetic exchange similarly my program is super reasonably priced at a hundred bucks a month would i pay a hundred dollars a month for sales training no why i don't need sales training at this <laughs> moment but would I and do I pay a hundred bucks a month to other advisors in other areas of my business? Absolutely. freaking lutely I don't want to do my own SEO. Ew. But do I think my SEO provider would pay for what they, what I pay for SEO? Heck no. Why? They don't have the problem, which is why it all goes back to problem solving for money, right? So what you would pay to solve the problem that you solve is not relevant. It's not relevant. A cupcake baker who charges five pounds for a cupcake is not going to charge themselves five pounds if they bake at home. They're not. They're not. Right. And so that's one of the main things I see all the time is people go, well, I could never pay that. Cool. You don't have the problem. We need to be looking at the people on the receiving end of the problem and how much they are able to invest where they are and apply towards solving that problem. And the other thing on pricing that I'll say, because I know I'm going long-winded on this, but the last thing on pricing is don't forget the other currencies. Money mm. is the major currency, but time and energy are also currencies. So when you're looking at your pricing, make sure you're factoring that in too. My program is a hundred bucks a month, but it's also several hours a month. And I can't sell that to somebody who just wants to throw a hundred dollars at a problem if they're not also willing to come to class. Oh, that's true. When you're doing coaching and people either don't turn up or don't make any progress. And then right. it's like, well, I want my money back because I've not had the results. And it's like, well, hang on. What have you done for yourself? Nothing. You've got to be committed to this stuff. 
Exactly. But if I'm not as service provider, if I'm not saying up front, I'm asking you for a hundred dollars a month, approximately three hours a week, a month. And I'm asking you to do the hard work of trusting yourself and putting yourself out there. That's all kinds of different stuff. Because if I just say, Hey, give me a hundred bucks in three hours, then people can be like, Oh, this is going to be a cakewalk. And then the very first second they get on the call, I'm like, give me your pitch. And they're like, I don't want to do this. Okay. Well then why are you here? <laughs> I don't want to do it. I see, I do that with tuition when I do maths tuition and it's like, because some of the kids want to come to the lesson and then just do the work and then leave and it's like no there's homework and then yes. there's a re revision and then you need to know what you're doing next week before we come to it because I'm not teaching you it in an hour and it's like oh hang on there's a lot of work and it's like yeah do you want to pass yes. an exam or not you know do you want yes. to improve or not do yes is there a goal here or not because mm -hmm. something like running a business or building a business or fixing your life or healing your heart or whatever it is that we do it's not a once and done no it's a process that builds on itself so yes monetary pricing is extremely important but avoid the gimmicks and look at what's out there and what's available you don't have to ape what your competitors are doing if it doesn't feel right but make sure when you're making those decisions you're making it for the client and not out of your own wallet because none of that is going to be helpful for them and it's just going to confuse the client when you go well based on my research and then you say something that's totally not based on any research that's just based <laughs> on your own life do you think that for people that are kind of um you know people get quite emotional about kind of pricing and sales do you think it's helpful mm -hmm. to um you know maybe reduce it to some sort of a non-emotional process so that you can kind of work through it methodically um to try and figure out what your price is and figure out how to sell so that you're not you know bringing all of this emotional baggage back up each time you try and do it you're listening to the Kuno podcast. If you want to ask a question to our experts, just go to kunocoaching.com and you will find the link to the podcast where you can leave us a voice message or send us an email and we will ask your question direct to the expert. That's kunocoaching.com. Kuno Coaching is set up to offer mentoring, coaching and courses in leadership, negotiation and soft skills. If you're interested in finding out more about what Kuno Coaching has to offer you, you can get in touch via Facebook, Instagram, you can type Kuno into Google, you can email us on kunuacoaching at gmail.com or go to our website at kunuacoaching.com. That's kunuacoaching.com. Absolutely. Absolutely. And in a couple of different ways, like when you're on an actual sales call, uh, try to get to the point where you can just say, and the price for what we've talked about today is X. One of the really stupid hacks that I have done is like I've said, like a hundred bucks a month. We'll just use that. Right. So one of the things that's, it's, it's really uncomfortable to say that the first couple of times, and it's really uncomfortable to not sit there and like, imagine that they're going to have some horrible reaction. Right. So what I literally encourage my clients to do, and this is freaking stupid, but it works is whatever your price point is, I want you to walk around your house and out loud, I want you to say, this pen is $100 a month. This coffee cup is $100 a month. This microphone is $100 a month. This bracelet is $100 a month. This mouse is $100 a month. No emotion at all other than just confidence, right? That way, the first time you say it, it's not about your product and it's not in front of a client. You're getting it into your mouth. I'm telling you, that sounds outrageously stupid and your friends and family will look at you funny, but it freaking works because when I say this hair tie is $100 a month, this bill from the IRS is $100 a month, I'm not applying emotion to it. I'm just saying it, right? I'm just saying it. But what happens when we are in a selling situation, if we have that weirdness about our pricing and we haven't just walked around and been like, this blank is $100 a month, what we do or what we have the tendency to do if we're uncomfortable is we'll go, Marie, it's 100 bucks a month. Now listen, okay, you're paying in pounds, so it's even less for you mm -hmm. because the exchange rate and everything else, but like, if that's too expensive, we could break it into payments. And like, I know, but like, I don't even know, like, what, what is it? Like, I know it's like 1.8, so like, I think it's like $80 for you or 80 pounds for you. Or like, what do we say? Do we say pounds? Do we say quid wait you're in scotland right now oh that's right you're not even in england you're in scotland okay so with that like why am i doing any of that that is not negotiation that is word vomit hmm. 
right? And, and, and it, it robs and it, me of power in that moment. So what I yeah. love to tell people is say the price as the price and then no joke, bite your tongue, bite your cheek, turn yourself on mute. If you're on the phone, hit the mute button, do whatever you got to do. Because the one thing in bro sales that I agree with is after the price is said, he who speaks first loses. That's true. If I sit there and I say my price and then I babble into oblivion, I've also talked over your opportunity to think. Yeah. Right? So say the price as a number. And then the true magic is called shut up. <laughs> there, there is kind of, when, when that happens, there is kind of an indication of like not a lot of confidence in the product. And, and it's kind of yes. weird because when the same people are selling a product for someone else, they're quite happy to say, oh, that's 10,000 pounds for, for that. And if you want to pay it, pay it. Or so if you don't, don't, it's not my business. But yeah, when it's yeah. their business, it's like, oh, but I'll discount it and I'll do this and let's do an introductory offer. And the, the pricing gimmicks that are out there, are, you know, you could go on forever just trying to price things. It's nuts. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, especially if I go to a really beautiful restaurant and I ask for the specials and the waiter tells me the specials, at the end of it, and they'll say, and the price for that steak is 42 pounds. Okay, 42 pounds is a lot more than I normally spend on a meal. However, the waiter that tells me it's 42 pounds does not go, and I know that that seems a little <laughs> expensive and a little high, and I know that you have a lot of places that you could dine, so thank you so much for coming to our steakhouse. But the way I know, <laughs> so, it's 42 pounds, right? Because immediately, if someone starts apologizing for the price in a restaurant, I'm going to be like, I'm about to get food poisoning. I'll have a side salad and a water, and please boil the water first. Yeah. Why do we do that when we go, well, I know that that may seem like a lot, because my coaching package is actually pretty reasonably priced if you did that in a restaurant they would run or similarly even if the babble is positive it still robs you of confidence if i went to that same restaurant and they said okay here are the specials today ma'am and i said great 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 and they said are you ready to order and i said no if instead of them walking away to give me time to peruse the menu and think about what I have a taste for, if they stood over the table and went, did I tell you about the salmon? Did I tell you about the steak? Did I tell you about the sides? Our broccoli is especially good, but maybe you don't like broccoli. Do you like broccoli? If you don't like broccoli, do you like asparagus? Maybe you don't like asparagus. Do you like eggplant? We don't call it eggplant here. What do you like? We call it aubergine. Do you like aubergine? What's this? What's that? You would be like, please shut up and go away. Yeah. <laughs> Please, I'm just trying to have a meal and you're making me insane. That is the exact same thing that a lot of us do on sales calls when our person is trying to think. Let them think. Don't rob yourself of power on the babbling. I know it's really uncomfortable to just sit there and quiet, but if you listen to that call again after, you'll notice that it's a lot more uncomfortable to listen to yourself babble. So oh, yeah. Hush your butt and smile, right? Bite the inside of your cheek, hum a song in your head, say a poem that you have recited, give them some space, count your Mississippis, do what you got to do, but just <laughs> sit there and wait. And then, because that's also where the objection is going to come up. Then you've given yourself power before you handle that objection. Then you give yourself openness and you give them space to formulate that objection. So they're not just like, I'm not quite sure. I need to think on it. They'll be able to be like, that seems a bit higher than I thought. Annie, could you tell me more about what I get for this? They object with more clarity. We respond with more power. That is the simple gift of shutting up. Well, Annie, we come into the end of the episode and <laughs> you know we people gift of shutting up <laughs> we could talk all day on this because sales is one of the more fascinating kind of human interaction things yeah. um would you like to tell people where they can find you on the internet i would thank you uh, listen everybody if you are in a learning consuming space or if you just want to dip the toe into the sales thing what i want you to do is i want you to feel free to go over to my website which is annie p ruggles Rhymes with snuggles, smelled like snuggles.com. Uh, and go over there. You'll find my podcast, webinars, quizzes, all sorts of stuff. But if you're in active sales avoidance, do not go to my website. 
Do not. If you are in active sales avoidance, I want you to reach out to me on a platform with messaging. The best two for me are Instagram, where I'm at Anniepreneur, and LinkedIn, where you just search for my name. Those things have messaging. If you have a call coming up, a situation coming up, you're getting ghosted by a client and you don't know what to do, reach out to me and let me help you in those DMs. I will show you how much easier your next transaction can be gladly and for free, and then we'll go from there. And we will note all of this below so that you can, I'm disappearing into the background, all of this below so that you can um, click straight through as well. Um, thank you so much, Annie, for being on a podcast today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for allowing me to rant all over your platform, Marie. It has been a delight for me too. <laughs> You've been watching on YouTube or listening on an audio platform to the Kuno podcast. If you like what you're hearing, then don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any amazing content. And don't forget to leave us a review. Kuno Coaching.